a mix of things because I think you need to do that. I think that makes a business more viable or safer in the long run. Mm -hmm. So if pattern sales go down, I don't have to shut down my business. Right. You know, um, these things are really trendy. Yeah. Oops. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm your host, Sarah Scully. And today I have with me Donna Dracunis of Sheep to Shawl. Um, Donna is an accomplished um, teacher, designer. She's published probably, what, hundreds of patterns, uh, craftivist, and I'm very happy to have her uh, with me today. Thanks for joining me today, Donna. Thanks. I'm really excited to be here. I think what you're doing with the Vermont Craft Tours is so exciting to get people to, you know, learn about all the fantastic stuff we have in Vermont. Right, exactly. That was my goal is to kind of expose a lot of people um, that may not be as well known outside our state, um, but we certainly have a lot going on here, um, especially with fiber um, yeah. and farming. Yeah. Um, so how long have you uh, been kind of a full-time fiber teacher person? <laughs> full-time? Uh, full-time about five or six years. Okay. Um, before that, I was doing this for another five or six years, but I had a, a day job part-time or full-time. I went back and forth between other things, but um, it's only been the last about five years since I've been in Vermont pretty much that this has been my full-time business. Mm -hmm. Yep. And was there a specific um, kind of catalyst that, that pushed you towards t taking that on? Um, or was it just yeah. something you'd always been working towards? <laughs> well, I always, I always kind of wanted to do it, but it's a big jump to take a, a um, not have a job. Right. Where you get a monthly paycheck. Right, exactly. My husband does the business with me also, so mm -hmm. neither one of us gets a monthly paycheck now. We're wow. both doing this business full time. Yeah, it's a huge so, so the challenge was, um, you know, how to be able to afford that, which is one of the reasons that we moved to Vermont, because mm -hmm. we started out um, when we were married, we first lived in California and then Colorado. Mm -hmm. So we've been moving to places where it's a little bit more affordable mm -hmm. so that you can make it doing your own business perhaps or we could make it doing our own business right. but I guess the real catalyst was I got laid off from my job <laughs> <laughs> happens yeah and what better and, time than just to say reassess and say well do I really want another job or can I do something else so if it's if, right and I was already same. doing a lot mm -hmm. with the knitting with teaching you know teaching and I had a couple of books published already mm -hmm. and doing stuff for magazines mm -hmm. so it just made sense to let's take this to the next level let's mm -hmm. make it into a serious full-time business rather than a side um, side career kind of a side hustle yeah part-time side hustle exactly yeah and I think a lot of people get involved with it it's it's hard to to have faith that you're gonna be able to earn enough um, and have enough steady work doing oh, yeah. doing mm -hmm. that. So I think it's a lot of a lot of times people are doing it on the side for a number of years and then eventually say, you know what, I think I think I, I can make it work. It. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and so you do pattern design and um, you teach classes and you recently led a trip over to Lithuania. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Uh, this past so summer. I've done all kinds of things over the years. What I I, I have a uh, one of the things I do is I mentor people who are new in the mm. knitting. And crochet oh, that's great. business, and uh, one of the things that I try to help them do is to get diversified in what they do, mm -hmm. because you just never know what's going to happen with the economy, with trends, and and all of that. So over the years, I've you know edited books for publishers, I've translated books from German for publishers, I've taught at at yarn shops and big events. Yeah, last year I did a retreat or a tour of Lithuania where mm -hmm. we had about 18 of us and we worked with a travel agent and some people I know over there from previous trips and we went to visit knitters and mm -hmm. to see museum collections of um, vintage and antique knitting it was mm -hmm. fantastic so yeah do a mix of things because I think you need to do that I think that makes a business more viable or safer in the long run mm -hmm. so if pattern sales go down I don't have to shut down my business. Right. You know, um, these things are really trendy. Yeah. Books were not selling for a few years. Now books are getting popular again. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, so it's just, you kind of have to diversify and it keeps you from getting bored too. Absolutely. And you have a lot of, um, even within, you know, say knitting patterns, you have a lot of diversity. You've got, you know, complicated lace, you've got knit alongs, you've got beadwork, you've got color work, uh, you've got all the historical research you've been doing into these knitting traditions. Um, so I think that's really smart. Like you said, one, one, you know, it might be lace shawls one year and then those go, by the wayside and then it's beadwork another year or something like that. Right, so, right. Yeah. And yeah. I don't like to follow the trends. I'm mm -hmm. not into fashion so much. You mentioned right. that I'm, um, you know, I do the research into the historical mm -hmm. knitting, those kind of things. I'm really interested in knitting traditions from around the world mm -hmm. and the history of knitting and techniques that have been used. And so because there's so many different things that have been done around the world, I can kind of, um, focus on things that might be more trendy, but I'm not really a, um, a trendy person as far as what I design and what I like. Right. I, I really like traditional things. And of course, we have to adapt them for our modern world and our modern lives. So mm -hmm. we, we don't make exactly what someone made 100 or 200 years ago. But that's where my main inspiration comes from. Right, right. That's, that's great. And you would do a lot with... Um, Craftivism, you have a book um, of craftivist patterns. Um, was that yeah. always something that was part of what you were doing in your explorations with patterns? Or is that something that's, you know, obviously with the current political climate, it's it's yeah. taken <laughs> off a lot, in you know, across knitting. Um, was it, but was that something you were always interested in? Or how did you get I've started? I've done this off and on over the uh, decades. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> It uh, it's bigger. It was a bigger part of my work this year than it has been for a long time, or maybe ever. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how that balance, you know, plays out over mm -hmm. the coming years. But yeah, I did that uh, book, uh, ebook called "Knitting as a Political Act" mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year, and it had a variety of patterns for craftivism in mm -hmm. it: some hats and a shawl. Um, and, you know, different kinds of, like you said, diff I do different kinds of projects, but they all had a theme of being for some kind of activism or to make some kind of statement. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's not something I teach about or talk about much when I am in public because, you know, people pay to come to a knitting class or to come to a retreat and it's about knitting. And so I don't, I don't go into those topics because that's what they didn't pay me for. If I ever wanted to, I would make a specific craft craftivism um, event, mm -hmm. but I, I kind of keep it separate because I really um, also think that one of the fantastic things about knitters is that knitters are, it brings together people of all different kinds of backgrounds and ideas and beliefs. Sure. And so to, to um, form that community, mm -hmm the knitting I think is a, is a fabulous thing absolutely and I've seen that happen um, I made a pussy hat and took it to DC for the big March yeah. and and I've seen that happen um, you know not just there in a big way but in smaller ways too and people from different backgrounds and maybe different points of view being able to come together and agree and say well here's a here's a baseline of what we all can right. agree on and here's a way that we can express that so I think that's very valuable um, but I understand yeah. not wanting to like foist, you know, foist uh, very specific opinions on people if they came for lace knitting and suddenly we're talking about something else. So right, right, yeah. and of course, you know, since I'm very vocal about my politics mm -hmm. on the internet and on my social media, I lost a few followers at the mm -hmm. beginning of of uh, this year when I started becoming more vocal about that mm -hmm. and they're probably newer followers because I've done other craftivism things years ago so longer term followers of mine knew that I do this sometimes right but I didn't lose that many um, because I I do try to keep it um, visible depends on what the social media is and what it's appropriate for so like on right. my Facebook knitting page 95% of my posts are about knitting mm -hmm. because that's why people are following me there so mm -hmm. it's a balancing act but I'm not secret about what I think about things right right and I, I don't think anybody should be so yeah that's great yeah, we should just be who we are yeah exactly um I wanted to ask I think you have a knit along coming up I know there's a sort of a mitten one that's running right now but that may be done by right, the time this right. episode airs um but you have one in January or so coming yes up? yes I do a pie shawl knit along 
at the beginning of every year. Mm -hmm. And we start somewhere around the first of the year, and we end on Pi Day, which is March 14th, mm -hmm. 3.14. Right. Being the sort of abbreviation <laughs> for Pi, P-I. Yeah. And, yeah, so I have a new – this year we're doing um, a different option. I usually have two sizes in it, and this year the small size is a half pie. Because okay. some people don't like to make the whole big circle. They want right. to make a, a semicircle. A semicircle, yeah. Yeah, so I've I've got that coming out. Oh, that's great. In, um, that's more in, my speed. I might join up. <laughs> yeah, and it's nice because it almost looks the same when you wear it, and it's mm -hmm. half the knitting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my mom made a, a huge pie shawl for her um, former mother-in-law. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it, it took her the better part of a year to knit it. It was gorgeous when, when she got it right. all done, but it's it's a huge yeah. endeavor. So I well, can appreciate that. When, when I have the knit alongs, we usually make the pie shawls out of sock yarn. Uh -huh. So it's a little bit faster than the lace, yeah. Than working with the lace yarn. Yeah. But I have some that I use for tablecloths, and I saw a picture of someone was using one of the pie shawls from a past knit along as an afghan. Last mm -hmm. night, they put a picture on Instagram. I'm so cold. I'm using my pie shawl as an app. <laughs> as a blanket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's great. Um, and then what else can you tell us about 2018? What's coming up for you on the horizon? Oh, it's all about Vermont. 2018 is mm -hmm. all about Vermont for me. Yeah. I am not traveling. Mm -hmm. So my parents uh, live with me. Or actually, my dad's moving in very soon. And my mom's been um, here half of the year. She doesn't like the winter. Mm -hmm. um, she goes to my sister's down south. But um, so I'll have my parents here. And that, you know, I've been traveling a lot for years with the teaching and, and doing mm -hmm. these things. So next year, it's all Vermont. I'll be doing a couple of um, retreats here in Vermont. I'll mm -hmm. be doing the tour, you know, a stop on the tour with you. Right. Yep. I'll be doing local classes. And we'll have our shop open in the house. So mm -hmm. we'll be open here for people to drop in and, you know, get yarn or get help with the project and all of that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. I'm excited to see that. I've been seeing your renovation progress photos yeah. on your Instagram. So, um, yeah. we'll, we'll link up to all your sites and all your things so people can find great, you, great. uh, on the web. Well, that's great. Um, was there anything else you wanted to tell our audience? Um, no, I just think I'm, I'm happy for anyone that wants to come to Vermont and do a tour just like I did the tour in Lithuania. It's a mm -hmm. place that you love. It's a place that I love. And mm -hmm. it's really, um, you know, it's an honor for us to be able to show people around Vermont and all the beautiful fiber and farms and crafters and artists that we have here because sometimes we're not as vocal online right. um, as people in other places are. Mm -hmm. We stay in our little cozy homes <laughs> and uh, look out the window or, or go out working in the farm. And, mm -hmm. and so we're really, I think it's great what you're doing to get you know people to come here and, and see all the beautiful stuff that we yeah. have. Thanks. Well, that was my inspiration. You know, I saw these knitting events in Tuscany and in France yeah. and in Lithuania and you know Sweden and other places. And I was thinking, well, why not? Why not here? We have all that stuff. Oh yeah. Um, we just have a yeah. few a few it's mountains a you have to get place. over. <laughs> yeah, and it's a wonderful here. place for people to get away because we don't have the big cities mm -hmm. and so much of the suburban. You know, there's a little bit of that here, but really Vermont just rural and mountains yeah. and natural beauty so it's a wonderful place for people to get away yeah. from uh, their busy life for a, for a getaway right and to really yeah. immerse themselves and, and we're really fortunate that we get to live here exactly yes yeah. yes so thank you well thank you again for being with me oh my pleasure and thank you for all everyone who's uh, joined us on this video for being with us uh, stay tuned we'll have more interviews with fiber crafters coming up